exhibition the students will be arranging an exhibition on islam okay which will the students of one class would be doing this right yes and which will include panels as well as some models okay. on islam okay they tell me what the grade level what tenth, grade most probably grade tenth. Tenth. and first of all most probably they need to make a committee and they will appoint a leader okay one leader okay because this is very important as islam also teaches they'll appoint a leader there's a point here there's a difference between we appoint a leader and we, because we want to develop the skills of people okay to see who is interested in doing this so i would say that who wants to lead this project and i would leave it to the opinion of the students okay and when someone suggests and tell two people you know said like whom would you select from them so let it first begin from the students and then after that you you ask the opinion of the students whom do you want to lead the people he or b a or b you see what i'm saying okay good uh -huh. yes and uh, then we can delegate the responsibilities for okay. example we can have one committee which will be working on the location okay how big the area should be and where should the location be second will be a committee which will be designing the panels and models okay most probably doing the graphic work okay. most probably doing the creative work okay then we can have one committee which will be doing the publicity making the pamphlets Good. distributing it maybe on streets they can do some field work as well seems everybody in the room is media oriented it's quite obvious yeah in the magazine and okay any comment on this we want you to comment three way huh interaction I don't want every time to in, to force you to comment. I want it to come natural from you. Don't take everything and accept it yet like that. Okay? And before you do the comment, we will take a break. We'll give you a break to enjoy it and then to think of a comment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's continue the topic that we were covering. We were waiting for some comments on uh, the project of uh, what is the project? What's the name of the project? You can Islamic say Islamic exhibition. Islamic exhibition in a one classroom. Okay. Do you have any comment on that? Yes. Uh, we have made some committees how to go ahead with the work, and among the most important committee would be the financial committee. Financing financial committee. committee. Yes. Whether we have to approve from the principal. Where are you going to get the money from? From the school. The school have money. I think all schools suffer from money. Yes, inshallah. Your school has a budget. Thank you for that. Jazakallah khair. Okay, I want something and tie this. Another project. Let me just, while you are thinking of your project, let me remind you of something that I have seen in one of the schools. They were doing a wonderful job. Every day in the morning, they clean the playground the principal very important we should have mentioned this yesterday the principal with the staff in the front line and the students stand in rows very well organized rows in two rows they cover everything each one is responsible for a meter and they would start start so they start marching and each one of them would take something and put it in the back yes and they go until they finish the playground it takes less than three minutes to do that job. I think it's an amazing job. It becomes very easy. It's clean. And, and of course, they understand that they don't want to do this every day. That's why yeah, they keep the playground all the time clean. So this is another message, another lesson that's learned from this. So this is something really amazing. I hope you write this. I hope you document this. And I hope to see this in school. Try to imagine if this is done in every Islamic school. So everybody comes and would see the scene, a beautiful scene that you can see. Okay, collective work. Okay. Now we are a little bit, a little bit far from academics. I want you to focus on academics. If you didn't select a project, select a project that has related to academics. Please go. So we have a curriculum, international curriculum books. International? Curriculum books. Curriculum? Yes. It's other than the Islamic studies books which we have at, in our school. So it had a concept of save the earth. It was save? Small, yes. So as a teacher, uh, it was my objective to, you know, uh, make awareness uh, among the students. So we together, we planned out, like uh, it was regarding uh, global warming. That was the key issue. Okay. And Very then, good. sir, we uh, Now did we a, are talking, global warming, current event. 
uh, we did a role play where the students are given d different characters okay. like electricity, water, because uh, wastage of water. Jameer. And uh, one is earth, one child is earth, water drop, tree, and all those things. And then they come up and they uh, give their sad affair, the sad, uh, sad state. Like what they are suffering, and the human beings are the cause for it. Okay. And then, as a, a, each a child is given a task, uh, they make a cut out of a tree, a house, a bird, or some animal, greenery, flowers, okay. sun, and natural things, and all. And they come up in the class. We have a entire wall where we decorate it, and uh, we put nice green trees and all. And we put a slogan song, theme song on Save the Earth. That's taken from the teacher the from plan. the uh, internet. It's put, uh, displayed it. A beautiful wall is done in the class. Jameer. And together, the teacher and the students, they go and plant trees. And the children, they make a resolution that they'll plant small, small trees uh, if they have a garden. Otherwise, uh, you know, on their window pane. So that's uh, just to save the earth, make the earth green. That's good. I remember now two uh, things happened. In one school, it was a high school. And uh, they needed to make it look beautiful. So. Each class would uh, use the students and the teacher to repaint the whole room to give it. And, and there was a prize for the best uh, colors and the best things. And they were given a specific budget uh, to all the classrooms and they would see the result of it. It's another thing that you can think of that the students, particularly the high school students or the middle school students, can do this with the help of two or three teachers in each classroom. Another one which is a little bit academic, and I want you to think of this. Remember yesterday I mentioned something about categorizing stories according to the level of students? And I, I will mention this again when I talk about differentiation. Yeah, one task that you can take the students to the library and ask them to put stories in order. And you have, tell them that we have four categories, four levels. Level A, level B, level C, and level D and D is the highest. And you have these books, right? You need to organize them, let's say 200 books. And you give each group 50 books and you ask them to arrange few in A, B, C, D. You can give them some criteria for the one in A and the one in D and leave the other, them to the B and C to think of them, right? So it's a little bit challenging for them to put this here or not. They know A and they know D. Right? They don't know B and they don't know C. They have to figure it out in relation when they compare the A and the D. And give them time, fair amount of time, and let them work as groups, whether that in twos or in threes or four. And they would come up with, yes, and this is again would be something good. Yes, we can ask the librarian to give us his opinion after the students classify them if the librarian is really very skillful. See what I'm saying? So this is an academic project. And also it will help students to decide. After that they come to read D, they know that D is different from C and is different from B. It's a good thing that they can do. Very small task. I think this can be done by maximum middle school students or yes, primary school students if they read these stories. Okay, good. Another thing, another project some people didn't speak. What we've decided is, uh, let the students, Here what you? we have decided okay, on the project. I like that, what we have decided. Remember that certain time he said that I, I, I. Now we're talking we. What we have decided, it's not him. Yes. He didn't do the job himself. So we need to be very picky and to teach the children. Sometimes they say I and sometimes they say we. It's another skill. Yes. Okay, good. Yes, for grade 10 students, approximately. Okay. We'll you are them biased to grade 10 here. Okay, oh, and great. here they are biased to grade 7. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll make them study the sciences of hadith, not the higher, just a basic bifurcation of the sciences of hadith, how the hadith are different type of hadith, like Sahih, Zaif, Maudu, etc. And then divide the students into the different type of hadith, uh, based upon the number of students, the strength of the students in the class. For example, we have, for example, four types of hadith. Okay. And we have around 20 students. So you have five students in every group for that particular hadith. And then we'll let them study that particular type specifically and let them enact, let them enact that hadith on stage. Like I am a Zaif Hadith because I came to you through this narrator who okay. is weak. 
or there are hadith for example there is a sahih hadith which is like this like this something like that which is higher than me and the way in which they come on the stage would be decided so you're like saying that i am weak so i fail to answer it go to a higher level yes right very good approximately uh, very something good, like very that very good idea and then the way in which they would come would be like the fabricated hadith first okay. there is something which is higher than me like you have the daif hadith good. then you have the sahih hadith so in that way you know we can make the students understand the different sciences how they are differentiated and they can understand the importance of the sahih hadith Mashallah. also has he taught you these ideas or no did he give you these ideas as i said we he was one of your group yes we i kind of read this in his eyes that he is the one who who gave you the idea i think it's a wonderful idea i see that it's a modification of the way that i said that uh, uh, hanafi and shafi'i and hanabil in a way it's similar but it is modified and it became better even you see this is what we want we want to get an idea improve it modify it and make it much better than the original idea all of us can do this by the way all of us can do this it's not this group but i like this very much yes it has many elements in it jazakumullah khair okay can we challenge those guys by another beautiful thing we didn't hear from here okay anything any comment from here okay now we failed we have very limit do you want to comment let to put it simply uh, the group work would be in the particular type of hadith which they have to research okay i would not be telling them what the criteria why the hadith is zaif so they have to study the criteria okay. and they are the group by themselves comes. they by have themselves to study what are the criteria of a fabricated hadith yes. or what are the criteria of hadith daif what are the criteria of hadith hasan yes. what are the criteria of hadith authentic okay yes. so now we have four categories is this clear and also the because there's an enactment Okay. So who will enact what? What part? Who will say? Okay. So in that involves group work. So this group would say the teacher would, for example, raise a hadith, right? And those ones who represent the fabricated, they say that according to us, this hadith does not fall into our category. Go and search for the other category. Go go and search for the weak hadith. Yes, we example. can improve in that way. Yes. And he would come and ask them. For example, the teacher would ask them, okay. Uh, does this hadith fall in your category they say no no it doesn't fall in our category look for the hadith hasan right is that what you're saying somewhat did you understand the idea the end product is that every one of the students know exactly the criteria of the hadith so they would understand really and they lived it already okay good now we are trying to do let's think together if we review the things that we've studied until now they four qualities the first quality was what the interactivity right and the last one was what the group work versus individual work okay and the second quality was what distributive focus right focus on many things at the same time and uh, the third one which was variety of teaching methods one okay they use different methods and do you think these four things are there something in common between them are they related and interrelated to each other or are they separate things we mentioned four qualities now is there anything that's common between all of them of course yes are, do they relate to each other yes tell me how the first thing that which we learned was about the uh, distributive focus When we said when we talked about interactivity, and the last one we talked about huh, group work, there is an obvious relationship here. Can also can we say that uh, this is related to different learning styles of the students, which forces us to use different Absolutely. methodologies? Absolutely. Why? We use different techniques and we get different ideas from you because students learn differently, right? And are these related to distributive focus in a way yes how one thing is that they are learning knowledge they are the learning science, knowledge they are learning knowledge and they have understood the concept behind they why the science is hadith they understand the concept behind the thing and they are applying its skills practice and they are acquiring skills i want to tell you that all the things that we talk about yes they are interrelated so there is no wonder if you find us repeating some of the statements or some of the ideas because they are interrelated 
But all of them, the more they are interrelated and the more you understand the relationship between them, the more you will understand the nature of education and how learning is happening. One thing that we usually say that, okay, teachers' knowledge are good. And we say that, but they do not understand how students learn. I want you to think of this. It's not just the knowledge that you have. You have to understand how children learn, how adults learn, how they learn. They have different learning styles. This is very important to understand. After a few months, you will find yourself speaking a language that's totally different from the language of other teachers who did not get this training. Believe me, when you communicate with each other, you will find you're communicating, you're using things that they are not using it. And you will see the difference between you. Jazakumullahu khairan. This is the end of this episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. A little baby pure and small He created you, he created us all Hush little baby, don't you feel